Ladies and gentlemen, let's try game into the com video. We're going to have a bit of a technology roundup, if you will. First thing we're going to do is discuss NVIDIA's Lightfield VR headset, which has been demoed at the VR LA conference. Then we're going to discuss NVIDIA's newest entry into the graphics card market, probably not one that many gamers are going to be super interested in, but it is the launch of the GT710, which is based on the Kepler GK208, and then we're going to swiftly gallop along to a lineup of new Celeron processors, which Intel are going to be launching in the next few days, and I have to say they're kind of cool for the price, but first of all, the PS2 Resistance the new HMD, also known as Head Mounted Display from NVIDIA. So, as I'm sure you're probably aware, virtual reality is touted to be the next big thing. I don't think I need to say that anymore, because virtual reality has probably gotten to the levels of hype that it cannot possibly hope to ever you know, reach in real life. It's like, it, it's just so hyped by now, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, but at the Virtual Reality Los Angeles Expo, NVIDIA was one of the companies who were happy to show off its wares. And the, I guess you could say, it's the main attraction was the NELFD, which stands for Near Eye Light Field. So, just to give you an indication of why they've been developing this technology and also how it works, quite simply, at the moment, any VR experience is accompanied with one thing in particular, motion sickness. Now, various individuals will experience a variety of different symptoms of motion sickness and also a different level of severity. Some, you're gonna pretty much feel it within a few seconds. Others, you might take a couple of hours and it may be certain games. But generally speaking, any experience, whether it's a PlayStation VR all the way, down to the oculus rift it doesn't matter there are some levels of motion sickness which is just based upon how the technology in those solutions works so according to the senior director of research at nvidia i'm probably going to butcher the poor chap's name terribly but it's david lukeeb uh, that is l-u-e b-k-e he says that the reasons behind this are because of this is because of the vengeance accommodation conflict, which is how much the lens of your eye has to change to bring sharp focus to the retina. So what the hell does that mean? Well, it basically has to do with your focus based upon the location of an object in your view. In other words, your eye is trying to focus on something differently. If it's close to your face, for example, let's say you put your hand, say, I don't know, six inches away from your face, all the way to a distant mountain that's, you know, say two kilometers away and you're trying to focus on that. You can imagine how that would kind of be a problem when you're gaming. Because essentially it's not like the the actual display changes in location, right? The, the display is essentially still the same distance from your eyes. So your eyes are trying to focus on this distant object, which is already the game has already corrected that using depth of field and all of the other effects so it kind of sends mixed signals to the brain so this technology is using two lcds and they're separated by just five milli millimeters and each one will send each eye an entire set of images so essentially you could say it's a 40 that's how it's being touted anyway the problem is that the resolution is kind of small. The resolution of the screen is 1280 by 800 and because we're stacking the screens for the LCD for the LCD panels remain the same. The problem, however, then comes down to the fact that these screens are split in half. So it's not just 1280 by 800. Oh no, no, no. It goes down further to only just 640 by 800 per eye which is kind of piddly but the good news is this is early technology so this is kind of a proof of concept rather than this is where we are up to nvidia are obviously gonna sell this to various partners so in the end they're gonna use higher resolution better panels it's kind of hard to know whether this is gonna be in the mainstream market because one can already make 
the assumption that doing this with expensive screens, and we know that that's one of the reasons, of course, that the likes of the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift and so on and so on are kind of expensive is because of the screens inside of them. So you can imagine what's going to start happening when you're stacking these screens with this, you know, new technology. It's going to be a little expensive. Unfortunately, I have the feeling that for the short term at least, virtual reality, the really the best experiences are going to be for the ultra expensive systems, which is kind of how we expected it. I mean, I was disappointed to hear about the price, for example, of some of the products that we, you know, obviously are going to be launching, but really it kind of makes sense. It didn't really seem realistic because some folks were expecting virtual reality to cost like, you know, one buck fifty and for them to be getting like a 4,000 by 4,000 resolution per eye screen and it's not like that. Maybe I'm slightly exaggerating. Anywho, moving on to the second piece of NVIDIA news and the one that probably won't be the most interesting to many, but NVIDIA have rather silently and without much fanfare at all actually launched the GT710. Not the GTX, oh no, 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 just the GT710. So what do you get? Well, a rather rip-roaring, an astounding, a staggering 192 CUDA cores, which runs at a base clock of just 954 MHz, with a memory configuration of 64-bit DDR3. Oh dear. I say oh dear, and of course, a very... Uh, teasing way, because while it does support technologies like CUDA and DirectX 12 and PhysX and FXAA and Adaptive, I think it's kind of funny how it's supported technologies or FXAA as if that's something boastful, Adaptive Sync and 3D Vision, and the fact that it is actually saying it's 3D Vision ready with onto multi-monitor support of 3, this card of course is for low-end GPUs. It's essentially going to be for like OEM solutions or streaming, that type of jazz, and it has its uses. If you're building a low power system, desktops, if you're building situation, if you want a situation where you're just going to stream, for example, from another desktop to your living room, I can certainly see that because the card's absolutely titchy. It's 2.7 inches by 5.7 inches. The uh, length is once again 5.7 inches, and it's still more powerful than most IGPs built into CPUs today. So, yeah, it's faster than 80% of IGP of current IGP uh, IGPUs. Jesus Christ, if I can speak. Once again, you're probably not going to be using that much, but it, it's the price is so low, it's minuscule. It's like 30 bucks for the one gigabyte model and 40 for two gigabytes. That's US dollar prices. You can you you know kind of guess your own conversions. It's good enough for you know the usages. It's not once again going to be for high end gamers to actually calculate the games, but once again, it has some kind of interesting uses. But anyway, Intel. So Intel have been busy bees recently. While I'm sure everyone knows that we're waiting for the next generation Canon Lake and Zen and God knows what else, Intel are hard at work. They are also launching a couple of new Celeron processors, which of course are based on the Skylake architecture. Now, there are a couple of notes. These are multi-locked, but while obviously this has not been confirmed, it's possible and probable that these will be overclockable via various um, motherboard BIOSes. Uh, obviously if it's updated, which could mean some rather interesting scenarios for low power, or rather low cost, high performance chips. And it could be kind of cool to make various PCs with these. It won't exactly be for high-end gaming solutions. The problem is, obviously, you come to the situation where you could theoretically buy a quite expensive motherboard to do like an upgrade um, to be able to run these at decent clock speeds. But still, so obviously, it doesn't really take much for me to say that obviously it supports DDR4 and that type of thing. So you've got essentially three processors that we're going to be focusing on. The Celeron 390 
sorry, the G3920. Which is not exactly a beast. It's two cores, two threads, so no hyper threading. Clock frequency of 2.9 gigahertz, two megabytes level three cache, and a HD graphics 510. But the TDP is just 51 watts. Actually, all of these are 51, apart from a couple of the i3s, which we'll get into in just a moment. Then you've got the Celeron 3900G3900. Same configuration, of course. And this runs edges 2.8 gigahertz. Same graphics. And then the Celeron G3900T, 3, which, same configuration, of course, slash threads, but runs at just 2.6 gigahertz. And only 2 megabytes of level 3 cache. HD graphics 510 once again, but costs just 42 US dollars. I actually screwed up at the start of this video and forgot to mention they're also releasing a couple of cores as well. So you've got the i5-6402P, which is a four cores slash threads uh, CPU, 2.8 gigahertz, 3.4 gigahertz turbo, 6 megabytes level 3 cache and retails at just 182 US dollars and then you've got the i3 6098P which has no turbo as far as I can see but runs with two cores, four threads, so an i3 with hyper threading and runs at 3.6 gigahertz but only 117 US dollars. I can see a couple of potentially really good bargains there um, and once again for example, you could run something kind of cheap, like say the i3-1698P or the Celeron G3920, along with, ironically enough, the GT710, and get a fairly good streaming system, and obviously I mean like GeForce Experience kind of streaming here. Whether you're going to want to do that, or Steam streaming, to be honest with you, most of this could probably be done with the built-in IGP anyway. But, you know, I imagine there's going to be some folks who prefer to use an NVIDIA card for certain usages, once again, streaming, that type of jazz. But, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.